Hi everyone! Today I want to take you on a tour of the different kinds of igneous rock that we have in our area. Uh, so even though our area's bedrock is sedimentary, uh, we actually have other kinds of rock in the area. We have metamorphic rocks and igneous rocks too. Uh, and they were brought here by glaciers from northeastern uh, Canada. As the great glacier scraped across the landscape, it brought all of these other kinds of rocks with it. So I want to take you on a little tour of some of those kinds of rocks. So one kind of rock that's one of my favorites is this dark black, um, really shiny kind of rock. And you can see it doesn't have any visible crystals or anything. It's a really kind of dense, even rock. Here's another one that's been beach worn. Uh, it's just really smooth. There's no visible crystals at all. And this rock is called basalt. Uh, and it's a rock that is igneous, so it means it's formed uh, in kind of a, in heat and magma and lava. Uh, and what happens is when magma comes to the surface of the earth and it comes out of a volcano in the form of lava, and that lava cools, uh, in this case it formed basalt. Uh, it can also form a kind of rock called rhyolite, which is a lighter, lighter in color. It's made of different stuff. But this particular one is basalt. And it doesn't have any visible crystals in it because it cooled really fast. Uh, since the lava came to the surface, uh, it, it cooled really, really quickly on the Earth's crust. But other kinds of rocks uh, that are formed inside the Earth's crust actually grow really big crystals. And that's because they have more time to do it because they're cooling really slowly. But this one came out as molten rock and then immediately probably cooled. So there wasn't really any time for crystals to form. And that's, that's the basalt. Now sometimes the basalt will come out of... Um, come out in as, as lava, but that lava has a lot of air bubbles in it uh, because magma is not just rock. It's got gas and air bubbles and water and all kinds of stuff kind of mixed in there. And if you've ever opened a bottle of pop and all the bubbles all of a sudden come out, the carbonation, that's because you've taken the pressure off that liquid and all that air that was kept in the liquid because it was under pressure can now kind of bubble out. And the same thing happens when magma gets closer to the surface. All that gas that's inside it actually can start to bubble out and start coming out of the, of the magma. And that's when you get something called vesicular basalt because it's got vesicles in it or little, uh, little holes in it. And this kind of basalt happens because all those air bubbles were coming out as the rock was cooling and then it left all these little kind of cheese holes. And that's um, why it's a different texture than this rock. They're the same kind of rock, but they have a uh, different kind of texture and this one's oxidized a bit, so it's lost some of its color. Uh, and here's another example of vesicular basalt that's kind of gotten all kinds of bubbles in it. Sometimes the basalt will... Uh, or the rhyolite, in, e in either case, it can happen to both, those little holes that formed, water will start to trickle through them after the fact. And any kind of minerals that are in the water, like quartz or um, other kinds of things, will crystallize out in those little holes and form these uh, little kind of pockets of other things. So here's a piece of basalt that's got all these little orange um, bubbles on it inside. And that's called uh, amygdaloidal uh, basalt. It's got um, these little uh, amygd amygdules, I think they're called. I can't remember how they're pronounced. Uh, but li the little vesicles that got filled uh, with some kind of other crystal. So there you have it. All kinds of these different kinds of basalt um, and rhyolite. Uh, but they are... Uh, all different looking, even though the same kind of chemical uh, composition. Oh, here's another kind of basalt I forgot to mention. Um, this one's called a porphyry. So you see how instead of having those round, uh, those round little bubbles, it's got square little bubbles. Well, they're not really bubbles, they're square crystals. So there, this particular rock was, uh, when it was still in the magma stage down under the earth, these crystals started crystallizing, they started forming, but then the whole thing got ejected and everything around it cooled really quickly. So they didn't finish uh, doing what they were doing. So there's little crystals that started forming and then the whole thing would have gotten uh, cooled really rapidly and they got trapped in there. So there's another kind of basalt altogether. Um, this is a whole bunch of um, granite. These come in a lot of different colors. I'll just give you a tour of the colors. Um, granite comes in all kinds of different 
um, colors and crystal shapes, but you'll notice if I if I show one up really close that you can see individual crystals. Each one of those little colors is an individual crystal. Um, let me find one that's a bit rougher. Here's another great example. And that's because granite is not formed on the surface where it cools really quickly, but it's formed kind of below the surface where it's had time to cool slowly. And so all those crystals that make up uh, the different things in the magma had a long time to cool off. So magma is not one kind of rock. It's actually often a lot of different minerals mixed in together and then in a molten state. So if you let that cool down, all of a sudden, all the little individual types of minerals start to crystallize out on their own. So when you look at a piece of granite like this one, for example, it's got some light pink spots, it's got some clear whitish spots, and then it's got some black spots. And the black spots on this one are made of a black kind of mica, but there's also white quartzite and pink uh, feldspar in there. So those are all different. These are what they look like when they're all by themselves. And then when they get kind of jammed together, they look like granite. Um, and, and that's what granite is. It's a mix of all of those things crystallizing out together. Uh, and that's because it's formed inside the earth uh, underneath where it's a little bit um, hotter. And so it can cool slowly and those crystals can grow. So that's another kind of... Um, igneous rock. Now rocks that are like granite that are formed inside the earth's crust are called um, intrusive rocks because what they often do is intrude little cracks that molten uh, magma will intrude little cracks in the rock and then cool and sort of crystallize whereas something like basalt is called an extrusive rock it gets extruded out and then it forms which is kind of neat so we have all these different types of um, of rock now what's neat about uh, basalt and um, actually sorry I'm going to say rhyolite where did it, there it went rhyolite and granite are essentially chemically the same kind of rock. It's just they formed in different places. The rhyolite got ejected out and the granite formed inside the earth. And basalt and another thing called gabbro, which I think I have a piece here. There's a piece of gabbro. Uh, the gabbro is just like granite. It formed inside the earth's crust. So it's got bigger visible crystals. You, know, you can see little bits of black and bits of green. I think that's olivine. Uh, whereas this one got ejected out. So this is an intrusive, extrusive, uh, but they're kind of the same chemical rock. So the gabbro and the basalt are almost the same thing chemically. They just kind of form differently. So all these different kinds of igneous rocks that form in different parts of uh, the earth. And then what happens is they are often part of the crust. So they get put out as the crust of the earth. Basalt is often what's on the bottom of oceans. And granite is often what's at the base of continents. And so when those continents and oceans get ground up or collide into mountains or have glaciers move over them, all of these things get broken up into all of these tiny little, uh, you know, rocks that we talked about today. And some of these have been, you know, if you look at this one, this is a piece of granite, but it's been worn down by the waves of Lake Huron over thousands of years, and it looks uh, perfectly smooth. But this is normally a really rough kind of crystalline uh, rock structure. And because granite is made of the feldspar, which I talked about, there's a piece of feldspar there. Feldspar has got a really uh, flat kind of crystal structure. You can see it shines when I turn it. And it's made of quartzite and it's made of the micas. Uh, this piece of granite actually is made of feldspar, but there's a bunch of black in it that's actually magnetite. So if I stuck a magnet to it, that would stick. So it can have all kinds of different things in it. But if you grind feldspar down to a powder, it makes clay. And that's where all of our clay comes from in the soil. If you grind quartz down into a powder, it doesn't get any smaller than sand because it's a really strong mineral. And that's where our sand comes from. So if you think about this rock getting ground down into smaller bits, it becomes clay and sand eventually uh, in our soil and uh, where we, you know, where our plants and, and everything grows. And you'll notice this piece of feldspar has a really flat crystalline structure. And clay's like that too. Clay particles are like little dinner plates and that's how it can be so um, compacted and elastic when it's kind of wet, how you can sculpt stuff out of it. Whereas quartz is, you can see it's kind of sparkly and, and uh, 
and it breaks in these kind of uneven ways so it becomes sand uh, which and you know how sand behaves it's different than clay because of their kind of inert uh, innate uh, crystal structure so those are some of the igneous rocks that we have uh, in our area uh, and I'm just gonna give you guys a quick little tour of all of them at once so here's some these are all different types of granite. You can see all the different colors. So this granite has a little bit of um, iron oxide or jasper in it, so it's giving it a bit of a red color. Uh, you can see all these different kinds of basalt up here. Here's a piece of rhyolite, and this one's actually got some little crystals forming, so it was a bit vesicular. In nature those little vesicles in it and here's that piece of gabbro so all those different igneous rocks formed in different parts of the earth's crust